He doesn't even get to finish his drink. He no. goes to drink that shot, that, that IO shot, <laughs> um, like five times in the episode, and he's interrupted <sighs> every time. Well, as uh, someone who is well versed at uh, the consumption of IO <laughs> shots, uh, all I have to say here is fucking amateur. You, you just, can be you, a man drink at the same time. You you just uh, you tell those motherfuckers around you to uh, to hold on a minute, and you take your shot. You you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Mercy to a virus never. Reboot. Yeah, real alphanumeric. That's Reboot. It lets you download useful tools, skills, and weapons from the game into your own code. They call me Wise One. The one I understand. The Wise, I'm not so sure about. Alphanumeric. Yeah. Cool. Reboot fans, and welcome to another edition of Alpha Numeric, a reboot podcast where we discuss every episode of Reboot from beginning to end, from season one to season four, but not the last one. So, I am your host, AP Sniddler, and joining me today is whoever won, wants to Christopher go Siege. Christopher Siege. And Asphyxiation, listeners. <laughs> and NeoCal. Yes. How's everybody doing? Not bad, not bad. Uh, yeah. Trying to mysterious adult pains. <laughs> trying to deal with some uh, some pizza related drama that uh, I go into a little bit uh, in our outtake for this week. But suffice it to say, fuck Pizza Hut. Yeah, fuck fuck Pizza Hut. Um. Well, my monetary woes are. Uh, we, don't worry, Sniddler will be back in a second. He's just <laughs> thinking. He's just thinking for a long time. Um, <clears throat> certain banking and crypto management apps um, accidentally withdrew $1,500 from my account. Oh, Jesus. That's uh... Yeah. So I got on their ass about it, and they're like... Oh, yeah, we're starting the refund process now. It can take up to 30 days, so you can't access this cryptocurrency where the mistake happened. And I'm like, but I have real purchases with that crypto. I should be allowed to buy or sell more of it. Why? Are... This is your mistake. You took the money from me instantly. Give me the money. <laughs> Why does it take a month to put it back in? And the fact that they froze my my crypto for that is is weird too. We uh we lost Sniddler, folks. He'll be back. Oh, here he comes. You gotta be kidding me. This, this... There he is. There he is. We were recording through that whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Why not? That's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. cool. I just rolled with it. Yeah. Did you mention um, the episode of which we are speaking today? Oh, I, I kind of rambled about um, crypto.com. Oh. There's no better way of saying this, but like they illegally withdrew $1,500 from my account. Oh. And yet it somehow takes up to 30 days to refund me. I don't even have $1,500 in my account right now, so that's, no. that's mind-boggling to me. <laughs> and furthermore, I it was for a particular type of crypto, right? Mm. I think it was, I, I'm not going to get into it, but I had purchased normally a certain amount in that crypto, in that cryptocurrency. They said that they can refund me the $1,500 and undo the, the purchase, right? But I already have crypto of that type. And they said, I can't buy or sell any crypto until after the refund is done. So not only did they take money and buy this when I didn't want it, I can't sell or buy more of that particular cryptocurrency. Mm. And I'm like, that sounds like a you guys problem. Yeah. Not a me. What if it spikes a... in 15 days? I want to sell and I can't. And then 15 days later, when that account is free to trade again, it's back down. I... So I'm 
like this close to going uh to the bank and just fucking like disputing every single charge and just backing out of crypto.com it is a huge fucking don't yeah. download it don't check it out uh, well, it's a no, pile of I'm shit not... I'm well, not doing that. What you need to do is you need to hire someone in the streets to uh, to steal its key tool from its pocket. Yes. And maybe spend more than just a few shillings. Maybe hire a, a professional thief. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just a, a shifty fucking street pocket. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're yeah. going to hire a, uh, a street pickpocket, at least hire Aladdin, damn it. Yeah. Right? This guy is just incredible. Throw that guy a couple apples and a loaf of bread, and that guy will steal anything. He's wild and meta and, what a, is he and, doing a, and in... a wardrobe upgrade. There you go. What is he doing in, um, uh, what's the city called again? Ak? Mos Eisley? Ak, Ak, Ak. Ak, Ak. There's a... Thing. There's an interesting Most collection. Isley. There's an interesting collection of references going on in this episode. Yeah, it's very yeah. interesting. So that, the, have we, this episode what, is called. Uh, this is the uh, uh, eighth Christopher episode will tell you. of season three, <laughs> the episode with no name. So we already know there's going to be some from that title. There's going to be some Western bullshit going on. Uh, do you want? Do you know? Want to tell us why? Uh, because it is a reference to to me as a uh, a. Uh, uh, partaker of cinema. Uh, to me, it is obvious because uh, it is a obvious reference to The Man with No Name, which was a trilogy of spaghetti westerns directed by Sergio Leone and starring uh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. So, gonna be some western bullshit. There's also, uh, there's like, this town is like kind of a mix between like. Agrabah. That's the word I was thinking of. That's where <laughs> that's the city Aladdin's in. Sorry. So it it the city that we're in is kind of a mix between uh, Mos Eisley from uh, Star Wars and uh, Aladdin. And Turkey. <laughs> There's some Aladdin shit going on yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Aladdin slash Arabian Nights. I'm, Arabian ki I'm kind of Nights. yeah. I'm kind of oversimplifying it. Over. Right. Like Arabian it. days. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody watch that? Did either yeah, of you? Yeah, yeah. Aladdin? Like, yeah. Yeah, of course. The TV show? Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's what we were singing there. Oh. <laughs> the intro to it. Well, that, that music was in the movie, too. Yeah, it was. Was it? It was, yeah. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, so this, The this movie. Is... Yeah, yeah. I watched that, uh, that Lion King, Timon and Pumbaa cartoon periodically <laughs> yeah everyone oh in yeah yeah it was on in like i think like 96 maybe you remember the um the bug catching mini game in like the sega genesis in the super nintendo Lion oh, King yeah. game, vaguely yeah. where you had to like move i think you were pumba maybe you were simba and you had to catch and eat the bugs falling from the the sky the the tree canopy and some were bad and some were good. <clears throat> this episode was directed by someone named Adria Bud, which that name kind of made me chuckle a little bit. I don't know why. <laughs> Adria <laughs> Bud. Bud with two Ds. <laughs> so people can call her Bud. <laughs> be just fine. Yeah. So right away we start off this episode with um a Stargate? A, a halo? Uh, kind of? Yeah, it's like this uh, circular thing out in the middle of the uh, the space ocean that has like uh, has like A beam? What, a, a beam coming out of it on, on the one side of it uh, facing Mos Eisley kind of looks like a portal of sorts like an entryway to, to this something. thing. Yeah, so in the sky we've get like a mercator like projection of land and ocean. Y'all see that? In like the horizon? Huh, weird. Cool yeah. though. There's a game that leaves and uh 
in the central square of Mos Eisley, uh, uh, our heroes, Enzo, Andrea, and Frisket are there. Yeah, they're in like a, an Arabian like market, but it's completely empty. Yeah, and Enzo gets all excited because, uh, what is it, Glitch tells him that uh, this system has a portal, has portals to the nets, which presumably are... is what that thing is out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, uh, what's the statue of? Any of y'all got some intel? Some kind of There's like a dude on a looks rock like, and he's like looks holding like a musket. Daniel, a Daniel Boone or something. Right? Some sort of, like, explorer, or... Yeah, it looks like Daniel Boone, yeah. Or, uh, or, uh, or Davy Crockett or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know who that is. Davy Crockett? Oh, this is very Mo Sizely. You've even got stormtroopers. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is great. Uh, so according to the reboot wiki, the statue is a reference to the statue of Jebediah Springfield from The Simpsons. I was wondering if it was Jebediah <laughs> Springfield. I was like, no way. It's uh, it the a raccoon hat. Yeah. Ah, well, Jebediah Springfield is a reference to uh, Davy just... Crockett and yeah. Right. Yeah. Gonna make me a raccoon hat. <laughs> yeah. So we've got all sorts of Star Wars creatures. We've got binomes that are literally um, stormtroopers. I like how we've there's a little shot dancers. of this like weird looking creature that kind of like walks like past the frame, which I feel like might be a reference to the Star Wars special edition. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Because they yeah the the CG monsters they added in they oh, added yeah, in that yeah. just like walk like walk through the frame at. Like in uh, Mos Eisley in the special edition, there's um, a snake charmer. There are belly dancers. The snake that the snake charmer is playing his flute to has a fez hat. Yeah. There's a lot going on <laughs> here. It's very busy. Looks like my kind of place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some blue kid in uh, a trench coat with like Elvis hair and a visor of some sort. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was me in high school. <laughs> he like brushes past Enzo and is all like, "Oh, I'm sorry, Mister Guardian, Guardian, sir." And he sounds genuinely afraid and then runs away. And then Enzo fi figures out quickly that he was a pickpocket who stole Glitch from him. Yeah, apparently. And then a, instead of according to the reboot wiki, this dude is actually voiced by the kid who voiced Enzo. Uh, originally in the first, like, ten episodes, a reboot. Imagine how salty they must have been being like, hey, we want you to come back, but just for a minor part. For, like, one line. And he would have been like, yeah, okay, work is work. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't know, he could be, like, super successful, and, and I'm just talking up my ass, but maybe he couldn't voice Enzo after those first 10 episodes because he was doing something else. One of the Enzos is actually a fairly accomplished actor. Yeah. Uh, and I can't remember if it's that one or if it's the second one. Uh, no, it's that one. Yeah, he, dude still works. Oh, okay. <laughs> then yeah, then yeah. never mind. <laughs> yeah, he uh, had lots of voice and live action roles into the 90s, the 2000s, even to the 2010s. What's his name? Uh, Jesse Moss. Okay. Apparently he was in Final Destination 3. Oh. Well, he went into real acting. For real movies. <laughs> yes, real the movies. Films. Yes. He was As in... a connoisseur of the moving picture, <laughs> I can assure you. Uh, he, he was in that movie Wolf Cop. <laughs> what? That's a movie. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember that back in movie? like the you remember back in the early like 2010s, like intentionally like bad movies were kind of a trend for a little yes. while. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, Wolf Cop was kind of part of that that wave. 
Interesting. Huh. Dude, a friend tried of, to convince me. What? Uh, uh, real quick, one of the only ones in that uh, like that craze that I actually watched was Manborg, and that was kind of enough for me because that movie's fucking abysmal. <laughs> yeah. Um. A, a buddy's like, "Oh, you got to watch the movie The Greasy Strangler," and I'm like, "What?" It's like, oh, just trust me. And he loves, like, trauma and, like, other, like, really cheesy, like, low-budget, like, Oh, like, uh, Toxic Avenger movies. type stuff? Uh, even yeah. I like that. But, I mean, like, he knows all the in-betweens, the non-famous ones, mm. right? Like, like he loves all that stuff. And he's like, oh, you gotta check out The Greasy Strangler. And I'm like, sure thing, buddy. <laughs> I'll be right <laughs> on that. And then next week, oh, have you seen the Greasy Strangler yet? And I'm like, does your partner tolerate you watching garbage cinema, or uh, <laughs> do, do, are they along for the ride? It's like my partner has commented at times, like, uh, like I've heard her saying to people, like, yeah, Christopher will just like, like I'll come home like sometimes, and Christopher will just be watching the room. Like, just casually. <laughs> Which, it's a thing that happens. And she's like, I don't understand. Oh, my. That's funny. Uh, I actually just watched it, like, maybe a week ago, too. I've seen so many clips of it and so many breakdowns and cinema sins, etc. But I've never actually watched it. Really? You Not should. from front to end, no. See, yeah. wow, I, Christopher lit up. I, I've probably seen it about a dozen times now it's like you can so you can watch like you know watch mojo top 10 clips from that's the what i've you can watch like yeah. uh 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 like bad movies with mark like his breakdown of it uh that's a yeah, cool channel sins. it's a cool channel if uh, anyone out there hasn't checked it out bad movies with mark um his samurai cop his two-part samurai cop breakdown is legendary. Um, but, uh, and like for the longest time I was like, yeah, okay. Like I've, I, I feel like I, I, I understand the gist of the room just from watching all of these, uh, watching yeah. the actual film itself, top to bottom, whole nother experience. Really? Yeah. I, I guess I, when, uh, the, uh, the dystopian night COVID nightmare is over. We're going to have to physically watch it in the same room. I think so. Cause you're not my fucking mother. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the results oh. of the test back. I definitely have breast definitely cancer. Have breast cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last. <laughs> One of the one of my favorite lines in the entire film is something that I never hear anyone talk about is after the whole like I did not hit her I did not oh hi Mark well, and Mark's yeah. like oh hey Johnny and uh, uh, Johnny is just like oh what are you what are you doing up here Mark and Mark's just like oh I'm just sitting up here thinking you know <laughs> <laughs> it's. I always like bust a gut like any time oh, like yeah. Mark says that, but like it's it's a line that I never see anyone else point out as being nope. one of the uh, one of the gems of that film. <laughs> uh, anyway, the room oh, yeah, podcast yeah. So, coming soon. So Enzo runs off to chase after the pickpocket. Yeah, and Andrea says to Frisket, "Hey, uh, do you want to do some shopping?" And he, like, angrily, like, growls at her. Like, yeah. what she just said was, like, offensive to his very soul. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, calm down. And she's like, please, just a little. And he ends up kind of, like, nodding. And I'm like, wow, Frisky can really understand English. And then we get a <laughs> Prince of Persia slash Aladdin chase scene. Yeah. Where Matrix is jumping rooftop to rooftop bouncing off of like canopies like assassins creeding across like narrow like ropes and stuff like that and i'm like couldn't you just chase him on foot your legs are like five times longer than that little binomes couldn't you just shoot him yeah 
I mean, look at this place. It's clearly lawless. Pull an Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, he'll yeah. pull out a blade and, and start showing off, and then he just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, best part of that movie. <laughs> but they wanted to Prince of Persia. And I'm like, wow, Enzo's got some moves. Like, he is clearly the most physically capable guardian <laughs> on the show. Yeah. He doesn't know it. He doesn't think... He might not realize it, but like, man, he's got fucking, he's got strength. He's got dexterity. He's got a magic eye. What more, what more do you want? What about files and apples and fuzz bars? Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. forgot about that. Yeah. 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 So Doesn't one of them have a tongue? Yeah. yeah. That, that's the fuzz, the fuzz popper. popper. That's it's the like fuzz this. Popper, yeah. It's like this, Ooh. like kind of i don't know like shark looking like a toy that you squeeze and yeah it yeah shark on a stick <laughs> so, yeah. and apples and three and a half inch floppies <laughs> they're like trying yeah, to what are they them. saying data what are they calling it files and apples files and yeah files and apples get your files um, the, and apples <laughs> there's a part where um enzo's like running across a wire and it just bends to his weight and goes down to the the street and he's like i'm getting too big for this and he just steps off of it and it whips back in, up into the air <laughs> yep. and i'm like yeah dude why didn't you just chase him on foot <laughs> get your red apples so something i comes... like their inoffensive um accents that they they, <laughs> they use <laughs> I was confused. So Andrea has a disgusting face, and then she looks at this weird green thing. And I just realized now it's the snake charmer snake swallowed the one by now. Yeah, yeah, the snake charmer. I, I, I didn't okay, realize that I was the snake. I had no idea what that thing was. You just saw her really? like make a disgusting face and like look at it, like me? Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. realized this, the snake is enveloped around him. But he ate him sideways. Enveloped? <laughs> enveloped enveloped yes <laughs> excuse me i have to go uh mail a letter in my envelope in my envelope in my snake envelopment <laughs> <laughs> uh so a thing comes down from the the sky drops down and then lifts back up and we got some uh we got some guardians yeah what is some green glow in uh in the in the portal and then it kind of shoots down to the system so is this system like westeros it kind of looks like guy it kind of looks like a tire if you if you pause like the thing that actually drops them down kind of looks like a tire oh the thing that they're in so i like just a... realized that the sky in the system i mentioned this before has like oceans it, it kind of looks like the earth Mm. But it's above them and wraps around. Now, in the lore of Game of Thrones, um, Westeros is on the inside of a sphere. Right? So, normal planets, you live on the outside of the planet. Westeros is, like, on the inside. Oh. Okay. So, the sky is blue because that's the ocean on the other side of the world. I don't know if it's true or not. But, <laughs> but like, that's what it looks like is going on here. Like in the sky, all around them are like co green continents and like blue oceans. No, I'm not buying it. We all know the Earth is flat, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So they come down on like a, a computer chip. Yeah. Or a, a, a big ass tire. It, it looks like a big like this like a sideways like uh, monster truck tire. I kind of wonder yeah. if it's like a visual like a reference yeah. to the uh, the transporter devices that the um, that the Jaffa use in Stargate. Oh, oh, yeah. why not? Yeah, it was out by then. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It was definitely out by this point. The movie came out in '94, and SG One I way think, before it. SG One I think started in '97. Six, seven, seven. Yeah. So we got some Matrix looking, the Matrix looking motherfuckers here. Yeah, these, and they're green and blue skin. Yeah, these dudes look pretty, pretty badass. I'm kind of, right. I, I, I'm into this this chick who is their leader. I, I'm a sucker for robot arms. 
<laughs> I never asked for this. Yeah, one guy's got um, Ghost in the Shell, like cyborg robot eyes. Yeah, yeah, he looks like Bat, kind of like Bateau from Ghost that, in the Shell. That, there we go. Yeah, um, the other guy's got like a Nick Cage hair. I shouldn't. I'm not one to talk. Um, and uh, he's got some cool red sunglasses. It's all good. He's a I cool got, guy. I got some Leon S. Kennedy hair going on here, so. <laughs> <laughs> just 90s 90s up this motherfucker right here but do you feel cool enough to save the president's daughter you know interestingly enough uh in that game uh her name is ashley my first girlfriend ever his name was ashley and she looks almost exactly like the girl in that game uh, a little weird <laughs> i it was it weirded me out then i'm like this is a really weird coincidence Especially when they have the same hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had the same hair, same colored hair. Oh, uh, weird. Like she, like, she was really short and kind of petite, just like Ashley in that game. Hmm. Looks like they stole her likeness. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they did. <laughs> Definitely. So everyone's afraid of these guardians. Oh, I do like her shoulder armor and her breastplate. Yeah, uh, looks like you, you're ready to place football. If you notice, their their icons have this like kind of like green like web like pulsating effect going on. Oh, good yeah, catch! You, you, Where's you, her you, icon? You kind of see that, yeah. Where's hers? Uh, I can see that she's got like green pulsating things around her scalp, and the the guy on her right has green around his eyes. Yeah, and the 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 guy with the the sunglasses, his his icon has the It's his icon. Yeah. So it it shows a, on all three of them there's some green throbbing BS in different places on all of them. Yeah. Good good catch. I only noticed that later when they pointed out. Yeah, when uh when we meet uh Turbo. Yeah. Yeah, listeners, so, we're going to um... meet Turbo this episode. Yeah, yes. it's weird. So, um, Elvis Binome runs into a CD dive bar. Elvis Binome, <laughs> love it. Yeah, and it's the uh, and it's, it's the most Eisley Cantina. The, it's the Cantina. Yeah, from Star Wars. It right, doesn't even you, pretend not to be. Even right down no, to the music no. that that plays is like obviously a riff on that Cantina band music. Yeah. Yes. So we got some weird Stargate robots that the guardians brought with them terrorizing the merchants in the market yeah yeah like they're like gold and blue like egyptian-ish like robots if egyptian colored almost reminds Sp there's a lot of stargate spidery looking guys yeah yeah and um the guardians are on zip boards and they're like terrorizing the the binomes too for some reason oh and at 624 before that weird pterodactyl monster flies by you can see a certain pirate ship docked mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Uh, oh and a cruise ship uh uh andrea yeah andrea and frisket are down at the docks and andrea goes to meet this actually pretty cool looking droid yeah the the silver chick yeah, yeah, silver and gold. I mean, I think her look is supposed to be like vaguely evocative of C three PO, but she's I she's think it's pretty original. She, yeah, she's looking. distinct looking enough. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Yeah, or maybe she's a a, a reference to Dot Matrix from Spaceballs. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> she does kind of have a a Dot Matrix vibe. The they, voice, they did a good job. The voice oh, kind of reminds me of her, yeah. Oh. A little bit. And the frame. She doesn't look like a normal sprite. No. She but almost it, reminds me of um the tea kettle boy. Oh, from yeah. From a few episodes back. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's a sprite, yeah. but he's, like, kind of robotic more than flesh. So, her name is Maxine. She was created for Reboot 
the ride which played in las vegas which played in imax theaters in las vegas vancouver and toronto yeah uh, he's chrome yeah she was a ride there there was a reboot uh ride shown in imax theaters yeah i remember that actually it was there was one in in um vancouver i ne i didn't go on it but Vancouver, huh. Las Vegas, and Toronto. What? Mm. When? When was this? Same time ish. Uh, yeah, like I mean, uh, 1997. Yeah. Seven. Oh, it ran all the way until two thousand seven in Las Vegas. Oh, to, oh, up until then. Holy crow! Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I oh, only yeah, knew about I it like in the late nineties, early two thousands. And apparently, mm. IMAX is the name of Maxine's ship in this episode. <laughs> wow. Nice. Cool. Uh, today I learned. I had no idea there was a, a, a reboot I, IMAX ride. <laughs> that must have been cool. I'm going to have to YouTube what the heck that was like. Yeah, there's got to be footage of it somewhere. I hope so, because uh, that sounds great. And, and then, uh, Max... if there is, we could do an episode about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's revealed that uh, Maxine is a... Oh, it's revealed later. Never mind. I'll, I'll bring it up later. Because she's not just a normal sprite. Uh, well, yeah, she says she's a search engine. A search engine, yeah. And um, she has this and boat. She and she takes Andreas, people to the net. Yeah, Andrea's like trying to hire her, and she's basically like, no, I can't take you anywhere without a boarding pass or whatever the exact Authorization code? Authorization, Authorization code, code yeah. right. And the uh, reason she needs that is because the Guardians have restricted travel yeah. to the net. Yeah. And Andrea's and she like, seems what? very surprised by that. Yeah, Andrea's like, what? Why? And Maxine's like, where have you been? In yeah. the games? Playing games. Wasting time in the game. And she's like, funny you should say that. <laughs> yes. So we're in the cantina. Yeah. Yep, and uh, we get some Star Wars cantina music. <laughs> some off-brand. <laughs> yeah, some uh, do 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 some, do. some president's choice. <laughs> some president's choice. Star Wars. President music. choice. Star Wars. No name brand. Yeah. Yeah. So, no frill. Uh, um, no frill. Star Star Wars. I, I'm going to explain that because most yeah. of our listeners are American. So I was going to oh, say yeah, please. I and I actually, yeah. I on another episode that I recorded with. Uh, uh, of another show that's coming up that I recorded with Lady Glitch, I made the same joke, and I ended up having to explain it to her. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, oh so... yeah, yeah. So in Canada, we have this uh, this big chain of huge ass like warehouse size grocery stores called the Real Canadian Superstore. Their like store brand of products is called President's Choice. Yeah. Uh, it's president's like... choice is even in other stores. Yeah, not so... the president of the United he... States, mind you. It's the president. Of the store, the yeah, president, we, the president of Canada. Yeah, I only just came to that conclusion <laughs> two years ago that it's not the president's choice; it's the president's choice, the president of the store. So no, it's the I president feel like of Canada. An idiot. Come on. Yeah, I was like, oh, Trump would buy this. Oh, I don't like this. You so know? basically, As... president, <laughs> president's <laughs> choice. You'll see like Fruit Loops, box yeah. of Fruit Loops, and they'll be like. Oh, five ninety nine, four ninety nine. Sugar frosted fruit things. And then you'll see yeah. next to it like <laughs> yeah, sugar yeah, frosted yeah. like sugar frosted fruity O's. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was it. And it's like re it's like half as expensive. The same thing. It, yeah. it it's uh, like our equivalent to and we also have this because we have Walmarts up here as well, but like yeah, it's yeah. it's our equivalent to like Walmart's great value brand. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Doesn't quite taste as good, but it's it's a it's a, it's a substitute. I got uh, I, I I got no hate for uh, President's Choice products. Their uh, their yeah, blue menu no. stuff's actually pretty good when you're trying to lose weight. Well, there you go. Noted. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Enzo goes into this bar, and, uh... The thief is, like, drinking, like, yeah. waving the, waving glitch around. And I'm like, dude, shouldn't you pocket that and, like, leave? <laughs> Be a little more discreet. Yeah. And, uh, Enzo walks in, like a fucking badass, like, 
pushing the saloon doors like yeah. open and just walking in like he owns the place. Um, I want to mention that the first episode I had ever seen of Adult Enzo was this one. Oh. And to me, this firmly established how fucking badass he is more than the other episodes. Like, I, re yeah. I remember this episode very well. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. Man, he's like Prince of Persia. He's got a fucking <laughs> gun that can go into Death Blossom mode, which we'll talk about in a minute. Pretty sweet. He's like a badass. He doesn't afraid of anything. It's... Got a, I was I was got a all in again. Fucking targeting eye, like yeah. He's got a robot eye. It's what more could could thirteen year old me possibly ask for? He's got a sweet leather jacket. His gun yeah. is basically the lo Judge Dredd's lawgiver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As fucking auto targeting. <laughs> it's amazing. He's got a hot bitch and a cool dog. Yep. Every everything a uh, growing man uh, aspires to be. In the nineties, yes. Yeah. Man, he's got like bands, like Conan the Barbarian bands around his like bicep. I he's mean, got everything. As you can see, like that's that that's what I aspired to be, and I think yeah, I, see? I think he's I got succeeded. tattoos. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. <laughs> uh, I think so too. I still have I've both got, my I'm eyes like, though for now. Like a third or like maybe like like two and a half quarters <laughs> two i'm two i'm three fifths as big as as enzo there i got we go. i got my 13 go. inch pythons brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm curious now i am curious oh here we go oh you just happen to have you just did you just happen to have a tape measure with you? Yes, sir. We're uh, wow. we're uh, bringing out the gun show. Bro. Okay, I, I got I got. How big are those pythons? They're they're more like they're more like gutter. They're just sixteen. <laughs> When I was at my smallest, I, I literally had 13-inch pythons. That's why I made that joke. <laughs> I oh, I was wondering where you were getting that. I, I measured that. I, I measured once. Uh, this, is, uh, this, like, this is when I was uh, like maybe 140 pounds. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah, I've been that. I'm definitely not that slim now, but I've been that slim a few times in my life. The last time I was 140 pounds, I was 14. I think the last time I was 140 pounds was... And maybe. yes, I just did happen to have this. Uh, three years ago, <laughs> maybe? You came prepared to the podcast with a... <laughs> In case we ever talk about my buys, I'm going to have this on hand. <laughs> um, hey, you never uh, know. Partner. <laughs> hey, you um, never know. When you buy things um, online, mm. and they're from like... They have like European measurements. You gotta be really diligent about their your sizing. That is true. And since we don't go out, we we have multiple tape measures. Yeah, portable measuring tape. I was expecting more than fifteen. <laughs> yeah. <Nope. laughs> A fall from grace. This COVID has been. Well, what are you going to do? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my shot, first shot tomorrow. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ASMR eat. Oh, God. That's Joss Lewis. All right, I'm putting you on mute. <laughs> How dare you? I'm just going to sensually eat this Joss Lewis right now. Yeah, the, the people listening at home will still be able to hear this, but I have muted my headset. Oh. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, I hate listening to people eat. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> don't blame me. There you. are times in my I can't hear either of you, by the way, but there there are oh. times in uh, the staff room at my work where I just find it absolutely insufferable. It's usually like I don't even usually eat at the table. I like I'll sit off in a corner by myself just because I don't want to listen to other people eat around me. That's fair. Weirdly enough, I do it? like going out for meals with people, though. So figure that one out. That's fair. I mean, uh, I, I used to work with different. people. Are, are you still muted? I'm here. Yeah, he's he's muted. I was going to try and talk to him, but he's muted. Oh, Christopher. He's, he's muted, everyone. You know what? I think this would actually be a great time for a uh, word about our Patreon. While he's frozen and while I'm eating. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's let's take it away, us. Let's cut away to that. All right, Patreon. Do you like '90s animation? I do. Do you have two dollars burning a hole in your pocket? <laughs> I do. Wait, no, I'm broke right now. Do you want to listen to three grown men talk about 90s cartoons like it was yes. yesterday? I know I do. I mean, I'm already doing that, so why would I want to listen to someone else do it? Did, you're supposed to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give us money. All you need to do is subscribe to the Lasercomb Patreon. For $2 a month, you get access to our Discord channel, which is where we record all of these fine shows. And you also get our eternal gratitude. Isn't that the greatest gift of all? Besides money. <laughs> Besides money? Which is, is what a we gift want. to us. It's <laughs> a very good, good gift to us, yes. I'm sure Christopher can salvage something out of this. <laughs> We see, did it, folks. See, I know how roughly how long the the Patreon ads that I have recorded are, so I just watch a timer on my screen. I I figured so. Yeah, yeah. I I have fucked it up a couple of times, like oh. <laughs> on last week's episode of this show. <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh, just roll with it. Yep. And uh, yeah. Enzo, like, pulls out his gun. He orders an IO shot. Yeah, he gets out his gun, and it, like, targets everyone. And he's like, we can do this the hard way, or we can do this my way. Like a fucking And, uh, badass. his eye connects with his gun, and it puts yeah. little reticles, little laser markers on all the targets. Mm-hmm. And he's like, gun, death blossom mode. And it starts spinning. A man, 13-year-old me, thought that was the most fucking badass thing ever. Apparently, death blossom mode is a reference to the last Starfighter. Mm. So death blossom in, like, gaming or terms, like, related to this, is kind of when... <laughs> Uh, maybe and, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but a death blossom is when you just spin in a circle and just hold the fire button. Um, did either of you play uh, Asteroids? Not uh, often, no. I, I have played it before. New, yeah. new players would just spin in a circle and kind of <laughs> like hold the fire button down. Um, you usually end up dying from that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while in the bar, uh, Matrix has his gun target all of the patron, pa patrons. Almost said patrons. <laughs> <laughs> and initiate Death Blossom mode, a reference to 1984 film The Last Starfighter, directed by Nick Castle. Right. Uh, which was a movie I loved when I was a little kid, but I haven't, and I own it on Blu-ray, but That's I haven't watched it. Movie. I haven't watched it in like probably like 30 years now, so I don't remember anything about it. Apparently, according to Urban Dictionary, a death blossom is also when a group of armed soldiers fire indiscriminately and kill everyone or everything in all directions. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, it's an actual military you know. word. 
don't know who to trust, shoot everyone. Uh, I mean, that I I feel like that's sound life advice. That's... <laughs> Especially <laughs> if you live in the South. <laughs> Where everyone has guns. Where everyone knows your name. And what uh, what kind of heat you're packing. Yeah. Hey, man, after um, that one guy, this was years ago, there was, like, a guy that, like, started firing through the door in, like, the walls of a church. And maybe it was in Texas, or I'm not really sure where it was. And people nearby, like, jumped in their truck and chased him down. And, like had like an like on the road like mad max fucking gunfight with this guy before Shit. like police like showed up so they like I, I can't remember if the guy died but they at least like p shot his tires out or his windshield yeah. or something and got him he was either apprehended or killed wow and i'm like i mean in that situation i'm glad those random guys had guns in their truck <laughs> right because yeah they started firing at him in the parking lot i think and he retreated and if they weren't there like what would he have just gone into the church and started executing people so i i i can see the argument for lawful citizens having um gun permits did you guys i'll just hear, leave it at that did you guys hear about the um uh, the murder that happened in Nanaimo. This is semi-local talk, but the murder that happened in Nanaimo yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I did not. Uh, yeah, some people in a car up in, uh, up by, uh, now we're getting into super local talk, but the, the Wendy's on uh, near Country Club Mall in Nanaimo. I know more, fam. I know exactly where that is. Uh, yeah, apparently a, a car full of people, like, showed up and, uh, gunned down a dude who was sitting in the front seat of his car, killed him, shot him like several oh, times, wow. and then took off. And wow. they were apprehended after a standoff at a uh, Best Western on Metro Drive. This just happened after yesterday. Standoff. Yeah. Holy shit, I need to look into this. Uh, so... Nanaimo. I wish I could say that surprised me, but Canada is becoming more and more. It's it's if they, if they were staying after. at a uh, if they were staying at a motel and they were brazen enough to like murder someone in broad daylight like that, I'm guessing this was probably related to organized crime. It's funny that you mentioned that. Did I ever mention when the apartment next to me was like, like? special like task force like raided <laughs> them no okay maybe off air or something i'll i'll mention that it was it was handled extremely well on on their part but reading about it afterwards was bizarre yeah I have a uh, um, I have a pretty bananas yeah. story involving a, a place that I was in getting raided by cops really um yeah you were in yeah yeah they were looking for me um wow. because someone made a false report someone who had a grudge against me uh made a false report um i will talk that about should be... i will talk about this in a patreon outtake sometime maybe next week so if you're curious subscribe yes. five dollars Is... <laughs> there you go isn't that um like isn't that a chargeable offense to provide police false information like that? It is, false yeah. Tip. Yeah. Hmm. I uh, hmm. all I know is what uh, what went down on my end. I don't know what the the fallout beyond that was. Hmm. But okay, we shall find out. I, I had time. I had cops uh, butt burst into my house and rough me up and throw me outside and put me in a cop car for like two hours, and then wow. after and then after that when they figured out there was that the tip that they got was bogus, uh, they let me go. Wow! And then told me that I shouldn't uh, I I shouldn't be I shouldn't be dressing so suspiciously. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Officer. So you were asking for it. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. 
is what. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to remember to to go into this in great detail on next <clears throat> okay. week's outtake. Okay. So death blossom mode. What happens here? Everybody freaks out. No wait. They freak out and the there, thief there's ends little, up. There's little blue blue guy and there's like two big globule balls. Big bruiser arms. alien dudes. Yeah, that are they, there. they're kind of just floating there. But uh, he ends up giving up. And um, he's he, he like kicks glitch. glitch. Yeah, he puts glitch down on the floor and then kicks it over. And then uh, Matrix is like, anyone who wants to live, leave. And so everyone leaves except for Turbo, who is standing in the shadows in the near shadows. the door entryway. Yeah. yeah. Done. Done. Yeah, I a... wanted to see Death Blossom mode myself. There, there's a brief interaction between uh, uh, Maxine and Andrea where Maxine ex explains that the, the Guardians uh, uh, are not really the good guys anymore, basically. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, uh, back and at, so drinks his I.O. shot. Back at the Mo Sizely canteen, uh, we get a little interaction between Turbo and Matrix where... Enzo is like, Turbo, you ruined my life, motherfucker. You tried to blow up mainframe. Yeah, he says he's looking for Guardian 452. And Bob immediately recognizes that as Bob's Guardian yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. Bob uh, Bob doesn't. Uh, Enzo does. Oh, so, sorry, Enzo immediately recognizes yeah. that as Bob's, Bob's Guardian number. Yeah, identification thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Enzo's uh, icon was upgraded to Guardian status with by Bob using his own icon. So right, and uh, apparently Turbo's um, Guardian key tool is named um... Copeland. Oh yeah, sorry, Copeland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a, he's American boy. This this fella here. What have you done with Bob? <laughs> He's like a, a southern Optimus Primal. Hmm, funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently Copeland was a unfinished two-year project at Apple Computers to create an updated version of the Macintosh operating system. Which I have oh. long suspected that these sh this show was made using Macs. Based on all of their very heavy references. Yeah, specifically to, like, Mac it, stuff. It, it, I think so. Yeah. So, basically, uh, Copeland puts, like, binding energy beams around uh, Enzo. We see these a lot in mainframe shows. Yeah, yeah. just energy bondage. Energy shackles. Bondage. Energy yeah. bondage. Shackles sound better, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and so Turbo's high and mighty, and he kind of comes over to uh, Shackled Enzo, and he's like, what's your name, son? You can call me Matrix. Enzo Matrix? <laughs> Copeland, release field. And he's he's freed. So before, um, in some preamble, we mentioned, um, it's like, how does Enzo know who Turbo is? Yeah, it's something that even the the reboot wiki brings up. It says, "Oh, does it?" It says it's unclear how Matrix and Turbo already know of each other. Most likely, Bob told the mainframers about Turbo when explaining where the Bob came from that created the web portal. What I think is more likely is that it was Mouse, because Mouse worked. Mouse worked for Turbo. for Turbo. It's it's been yeah. established that during that arc where it's like mainframe. The, the principal office versus megabyte, right? Yeah. That there were things explained or done by Mouse off screen. For example, we never actually got to see Mouse modify the icons to AI icons. That's true. Yeah. So it's presumable in somewhere off off screen that Mouse kind of opened up about her mission to confirm whether a web creature was in mainframe way back then at the end of season two, right? She didn't know that her communication device was actually an explosive. Turbo was the one set him up. So that makes perfectly reasonable sense to me why Enzo 
um, is fully aware of who Turbo is. Yeah, because yeah. like he doesn't recognize him or anything, but he hears the oh, name. Oh, because he never Tur- seen him. Yeah, but he hears the name Turbo, and he's all like, "Motherfucker!" Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now they're kind of sitting at the bar, like talking mano y mano, and Turbo explains that the uh, that uh, the the guardians have been infected with this super virus by something named Damon. Damon. And da- we also find yeah. out that Damon apparently was the one who arranged for the web creature to go into mainframe to begin with. Mm. Oh, is that? Ex- yeah. Did I miss that? Yeah, yeah. He mentions that. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. So it's not Mike the TV's fault after all. <laughs> no. Really. Because we've been blaming Mike the TV <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> we've been Mike the TV him. and um, Hexadecimal's mirror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But apparently you know what? Damon I like was behind that. it. Uh, that, that's some closure for me. It's interesting. Um, uh, what's this freaking key tool called again? Copeland? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it reacts and glitch on the counter like buzzes and like moves yeah. and he's like oh i haven't seen glitch in a long time and i'm like the key tools are sentient or have they have a very base ai or something yeah, yeah. and this is where it's like the whole like the wand chooses you because turbo explains that glitch only works for um guardians it chooses to work for yeah, that's so uh... like another binome or sprite can't just pick it up and use it. Yeah, and I I like that I I like that explanation. I I think that so, gets so elaborated more, upon it, further. It, it, as even though it's broken, on. even though it's broken, it's more or less been cooperating with Enzo, because you know it's got to find Bob. So Glitch is also trying yeah. to find Bob, not just Enzo and Andrea. Yeah, and but, unfortunately, yeah. Megabyte smushed it up some. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but... Turbo explains that the uh, the the key to f- defeating Damon is through Bob's guardian code because he's the only uninfected guardian in the net. Ah, uh, interesting. Because he's not in the net when the in- he wasn't in the net when the infection happened. Yeah. Oh. So now guardian or now Bob holds the secret to saving the entire net from Damon. No so... pressure, man. No pressure. <laughs> and Enzo has to find and him Enzo, alone. And Enzo no has pressure. to find him. No pressure. Right. <laughs> uh, and it's also revealed to him, um, maybe if not right now, maybe in a, a future, like in a few minutes, but hey, um, it's been less time than you think. Because he was surprised that Enzo was, so, was this much older. Yeah. yeah. And I think, again, I think this is in a scene a little bit later, but since we're on the subject, he says, um, you look to be what? What does he say? Like, 1-1? One, one? Well, he says that, uh, he, he uh, mentions to Enzo, he's like, uh, he's like, you haven't really been gone as long as you think. Like, game time is different. Like, you're probably only about 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Yes. Which is and he was one o. Yeah. And he was one o before. So if we think about it along those terms, right? Him system hopping, he doesn't experience. He experiences times um, fairly quickly, right? But in the time it takes the user to pull that floppy disk out, give it to someone else in the office, and load that up, right? Yeah. Whole minutes have gone by. If you if you think about it like that. Yeah. Right. Hell, sometimes overnight. (laughs) <laughs> right so um if one o is correct me if i'm wrong one o is binary for two and one one is binary for three it's been about a year ish in real time for everyone else yeah, yeah even though it's been 10 years for uh matrix frisket and andrea yeah that's how i i reason it he's like when you're in a game like an indiscriminate amount of time moves by Mm-hmm. Or sorry, when you're moving systems in a game, mostly I would say. 
Yeah. Like I said, sometimes you you lend it. Sometimes you you bring a game home. Sometimes you lend it to a friend. Um, I like to think that it's, one where they were stuck in the, the system. Sometimes the floppy just sits in the drawer for like six months. months. <laughs> Uh, like when they got stuck in that one system and were playing golf forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the user play anything? And that's when this. I, what I do like about that is they started realizing, like, oh, it's up to the user where we go. Yeah. And yeah. so he, he's figuring out the universe that he's in. I like that. Well, and he, like, them game hopping, like, doesn't seem to be a regular thing that people do. So, or Turbo doesn't even realize that it was possible so, until now. Yeah. So, this is, uh, he's got kind of a unique, uh, perspective on the user at this point. That's true. I never thought about that. Yeah. His perspective is different. You can see patterns in the Matrix. Mm hmm. He doesn't and, even uh, see so... the code anymore. All he sees is blonde, brunette, redhead. <laughs> I could I could continue <laughs> quoting the Matrix forever. It's like me uh, so what Transformers happens... the movie. Yeah. Um, so what happens here while he's talking with Turbo is the Guardians, those three badass looking guys, uh, speaking of the Matrix, that look like they're they're from the matrix uh, or unplugged from the matrix and going back in uh they open fire at the bar like indiscriminately so that makes me think that they don't realize turbo is in there yeah well maybe they do because turbo isn't exactly with them well, remember, he said, "I can't help you. It's better if I work with you from the inside." Yeah, so I think oh, they just don't know right. what's there. Sorry, yeah, I totally forgot. He so said he that. needs yeah. to hide that he's he is a rebel or he's trying to fight against Damon because that's why he doesn't go out and like help or offer. He's like, I, I need to get out of here, but I'm on your side. Yeah, and I, I th after this point, it's the it's all new for me. Like after this episode, like I, it's completely new for me. So. I, I want to believe him. I think at this point he he's being truthful. I want to yeah. believe, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, he talks about being um, corrupted. His icon and like near his hairline is like throbbing in green, and it's revealed that Damon is a super virus. You said, yeah, it's on his icon too. Yeah, yeah, just like and just like the other guardians, just like the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, There's he, a part he says that he's strong, he can still fight it for now. Yeah, which leads me to believe it eventually takes over. Yeah, well, and I mean, he's like, I don't know, I think he's like the boss of all the guardians, or he's like a what was he used or, a term? He said that he was like guardian commander or something like that. Oh, prime guardian, prime, prime. guardian, yeah. Speaking yeah. of Prime. <laughs> yeah. The Prime uh, You Guardian. made a joke. You <laughs> made a joke. Or, uh, Christopher made a joke before uh, recording that uh, his name was um, Optimus Turbo. <laughs> yeah, Optimus Turbo. <laughs> Anyone listening, um, it's Gary Chalk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, voice, the voice actor. Yeah, voice of Optimus Primal in Beast Wars and uh, of several characters in this show. Yeah. Oh, he's also the voice of motherfucking Axe Ape in uh, these stores. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> uh, one of our favorite characters from the, the later seasons of that show. Honestly, it's like, like, for me, it's like Black Arachnia um, and Rat, like, it's Rat Trap, Black Arachnia, um, Bird Mom and um, and her boyfriend, Axe Ape, <laughs> Optimus, <laughs> Megatron. No, <laughs> uh, you forgot to put Quick Strike in there, man. What in tarnation? Oh, he's uh, <laughs> he's on the bot. 
Do I hate anyone more than Quick Strike? <laughs> I don't think so. I actually, I actually don't think so. Well, anyways, I'm I'm ranting you, about Beast Wars. If now. you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna find out the answer to all these questions, go check out our other show, Too Much Energy. Speaking of Western, <laughs> go and check out Quick Strike on our Beast Wars podcast. Yeah, there's a whole episode that's a Western. It's a great episode. You think there are a lot of episodes of this show? There are 40 episodes at the time of recording of Too Much Energy. On. Yeah, there's there's a lot, there's a lot of Transformers in there. <laughs> Aiden's excited for it. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's happening here with the shootout? Uh, what is happening? They're hiding behind the bar, getting shot at. And um, the gar the blue guardians that are with the green guardian like throw grenades. They have a, a battle droid with them. Oh, a bunch of battle droids. Andrea and Frisket show up, and well, there's there's one little thing, but just before that, um, they say we're here for the rogue guardian Bob, which mean like, why would they think Bob? Why would they think Matrix is Bob? It, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, uh, Enzo like has his guardian code from yeah. oh, they... Bob's PID. Right, right, right. Even though he's like a cadet one or whatever, it has the same code. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's why it's just like, oh, they're they can track you now. There's nothing you could do. And Enzo's reveals to Turbo, he's like, actually, and he taps it, and it turns into an AI. Yeah. And then suddenly they can't track him anymore. The Guardians don't know where he is, and they're like, oh, he must have used a portal. So, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah there's, they're telling him to throw their weapons out and come out, and Enzo uh, yells to them, um, do, your, do your drones have personality chips? That, uh, that's a line that gets uttered a couple of times in this episode. So that's kind of asking if they're sentient, right? Because then it's not murder if they shoot them. Because the Green Guardian is like, no, why? And Turbo and Enzo just like blast them to pieces. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two instances in this episode where uh, someone asks if the drones have personality. Enzo chips. and Andrea, and I'm which like, means they they care about. Go ahead, Christopher. No, I, I thought maybe it was a reference to something, but I can't find any info about it. He, here's my theory um, on that. Um, Andrea is a game sprite, right? Okay. And many, yeah. many uh, sprites and binomes probably wouldn't consider game sprites like people. So when they ask, because later it's Andrea, she says, does your drone have a personality chip? Yeah. And again, she answers no. And then realizing what happened to its buddies, <laughs> it runs away. Um, and Frisket seems really disappointed. Frisket's all like, aww. Um... But like I said, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. What I think is um, because Andrea is an AI and, and Enzo and Andrea have been system hopping, they've met all kinds of life and intelligences, right? Remember the weird tears? What were they called? The, the, the spectrals. Spectrals oh, yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe drones with personality sh chips, they consider sentient and they wouldn't kill. Because why else would they ask, right? So I, yeah. I actually kind of All like right. that. It shows that they're compassionate about what they consider yeah. life. Hmm. Whereas they're just tools being used by other people. I I don't know. I, I like that. We're just tools of the government, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use it in a turbo voice, son. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, I think it's funny. Um, there's a little scene um, when Green Guardian chick 
um, catches that little spy with the the uh, Elvis hair. Yeah. Yeah. And it's revealed that he was working for the Guardians. And he's like, "Oh, I uh, uh, he took the the his key tool back." And she's like, "Why?" And he's like, "Had to, Mrs." <laughs> <laughs> And he calls her your eminence. And she's like, good, now suck my dick. And turns into a bulk <laughs> and picks him up and throttles him. Uh, I, I like that it implies he's some sort of like junkie or opium like uh, enjoyer because his eyes are all bloodshot. <laughs> uh, yeah, some kind of. Yeah, exactly. Those are. What you said. <laughs> Those are agreeing exactly the kind of people you want to hire to do shady things. Of Fair. In in cop movies and shows, there's always like that CD like dude that like cops like shake down the the snitch the <laughs> the person working with the police yeah. for some leeway. Yeah, that that's that guy. Uh, off screen, it's heavily implied that Andrea and Frisket single handedly take out the two uh, blue guardians. Yeah, because they kind of just disappear, don't they? Well, what happens is there's a feed as they're communicating, and he's like, "Oh, what about your uh, your partner and and your dog or something like that?" And he's like, "They'll be just fine." And indeed, um, in the scene after Andrea's like surrounded. Uh, sorry. Oh, that's what it is. There's a giant blimp with live footage of Andrea and Frisket. I forgot about that. You guys seen the blimp? Breaking news. It's like a, yeah, it's like a Goodyear blimp that's like, your girlfriend's going to be dead unless you cooperate. <laughs> and uh, Turbo's like, what's so funny? Because Enzo laughs and he's like, uh... They'll be just fine because the frisket jumps at the camera and presumably mauls the, <laughs> mauls the chest cam that the guardian had. Yeah, and uh, so there's sentient. No compassion there. <laughs> oh no! Well, here's the thing: you try to kill me. Like their attitude is very Western. Like you try to kill me. Uh, prepare. If you're ready to take a life, you you got to be ready to give your own. That's how I live my fucking life, man. Um, Christopher, what do you think of um that are, showdown with? We, uh, I was just gonna ask, are we in the alley at this point? We're in the alley because the the, the Green Guardian is like, huh? I wonder what took you so long. And Andrea's like, oh, sorry to keep you waiting. And she's like, and my men kept you waiting, huh? Yeah. Dun, and dun, my man. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Every episode. And um, yeah, this is the part where um, Andrea asks, looks at Frisket and asks whether her drone is a personality chip. And like a scared dog, it throws its hands up and runs away. But, so so I even guess though the they answer don't have... is yes. I... They said no earlier, but they clearly have some sort of self preservation. <laughs> for like, this thing sorry. to run away. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Frisket like looks really disappointed. He like flattens his onto his belly and like leans on his paw and kind of like whimpers. Yeah, it is like kind of like, like it looks like he's like taking his his other paw and like kind of doodling on the ground. Yeah, yeah. like idly like doodling. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. 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 I'm back. So we get a kind of like Wild West, like, duel, like, street duel scene. Yeah. And I, I think it directed really well. The it, close up it, panning shots of the robot arm. And go ahead, Christopher. It, it is. It's like something, uh, like, straight out of, like, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And even the music there's, that's there's playing. There's a good one. And even the music that's playing is uh, reminiscent of an Ennio Morricone score um oh that's a good point yeah. yeah and um the guardian hovers her hand over her gun her holster yeah, yeah. and, and andrea's I, and I'm watching like this nails. and i'm like yeah and i'm watching this and i'm like 
Andrea doesn't have a gun. This is going to be a very bizarre shootout. <laughs> right. And then she um, flicks her nails out. They're very sharp, and I guess she can do um, a, me a megabyte. Yeah. Because she's got long nails here. And again, I'm well, like, we've, we've never seen, seen... I think we've seen her use that. We've seen her use we've that seen, before when she was a we've kid. We've seen her put... Not shoot them, though. Oh, not Have shoot we? them, no, but, like, extend them out. Um, In the episode... Sorry, Sniddler. What was that? He's thinking. He's not frozen people. He's just given a long think. Uh, the episode... The Conan video game. Remember, she extended her claws and, like, dug them into the swamp beast? That was exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Then Christopher beat me to it. Uh, sorry, you just froze for. I I know, yeah. The, my connection today is absolutely abysmal. But what we don't see <laughs> is what happens here. Sniddler, do you want to take it away? Uh, to where she extends her claws. To the what happens when the the duel when the guardian tries to draw her gun. Uh. Guardian draws her gun, she takes a shot, and Andrea blocks it, and then she Wonder Woman fires, style. She fires her nails and they go soaring through the air and they, they dig right into her neck. Yeah. Right yeah. in the fucking like jugular. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. And like they're <laughs> even bleeding. Owns her, basically. Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh she's very dramatic, just kind of like uh and, and they're not bleeding from bleeding from her, um like Andrea's end where they came out. They're like her neck, the neck end is bleeding. Yeah, like they're dog right in there. Anyone watching the show knows that they're she's venomous. <laughs> but and, yeah, she Andrea can shoot them. like dusts her nails off afterward. <laughs> yeah, man, the Wonder Woman block. I she looked so surprised. <laughs> I want to think she's dead. I mean, we know it just it's just paralysis. But if you get a big enough dose... It's still, though. And it's yeah. to the jugular. I feel like this isn't the last time... Like, I, I don't remember the oh, rest okay. of the season, but I feel like we see this character again. And they're compassionate. Well, if this was a Hitman game, after you trank that lady, you go over and you just press the button for snap neck. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And yeah, then dump her body in a dumpster. So uh, back at the bar, uh, uh, Turbo's like, I better get back. But what I need is a tear. And Enzo just like shoots something. and he like shoots a coffee machine. And it turns <laughs> into a tear. And I thought like tears were created by instability in the system for, caused by games. We see in season one, I want to say. Um, the milkshake machine is on the fritz in the diner and it blows up, it, it like destabilizes and turns into a small tear. Mm. Do you remember? It's like the milkshake machine or some sort of like machine like blows up inside the diner. And those are small, unstable tears, uh, the tears, which can burn themselves out if they're not dead <laughs> directly handled. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, um, uh, sorry, distracted for a brief second. Um, I okay. feel like uh, somebody in a comment section somewhere on one of the many many videos that we've done now said something about uh, games causing tears, but maybe they were wrong. Oh, we've seen, um, do you remember, um, Bob is checking out the basement of the diner with, uh, with, um, Dot, and in one of the containers, a, a tear comes out. Mm. Do you remember? So, games can cause tears, but they're not the only things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever, whatever listener said that, if you want to, uh, chime in and, uh and uh, elaborate uh feel free feel free to be destroyed in the comments <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, the lack of comments with nobody commenting. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it'd be interesting to, if like actually we got tons of comments nowadays. If, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting to go from zero to hero. I say with our mighty like twenty-seven views, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it would make sense that it might destabilize objects. Like a game goes down, it could destabilize objects, and then it goes back up, and those objects could blow up and become a tear. But I feel like tears can be made other other ways. We've seen it multiple times. Well, we see it in this episode, and Turbo's yeah. like, huh, well, there you go. Copeland, portal. <laughs> Copeland, <laughs> yeah. portal. Turbo, out. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he fucks off, and uh, Andrea and Frisket show up, and um, Andrea's like, uh, was like, well, we're not getting out of here. And Enzo's like, well, we'll figure something out. And then in walk walks right into the door, and this like I actually like this this excited Holy me is motherfucking Captain Capacitor, the Crimson Binome, and Mister Christopher and themselves. Mr. Christopher. And we get that. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what this episode of the podcast is ending with? And Matrix is like Capacitor. And as if, like, he he has not seen Enzo in a long time. And he pulls out his, like, little, like, sword, sword. And yeah. looks at him Swing. in horror. And I mean, if Enzo looks like a hitman, so yeah, yeah, probably not want to be near him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, he looks like a merc. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he does. I dig it. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. And that's the He episode. doesn't even get to finish his drink. He no. goes to drink that shot, that, that IO shot, <laughs> um, like five times in the episode, and he's interrupted <sighs> every time. Well, as uh, someone who is well-versed at uh, the consumption of IO <laughs> shots, uh, all I have to say here is fucking amateur. You, just, you can you... be a man drink at the same time you you just uh you tell those motherfuckers around you to uh to hold on a minute and you take your shot you you I miss 100 like percent a... of the shots you don't take that's true <laughs> <laughs> uh uh yeah yeah so that that was the episode um sniddler do you want to tell them about our rating system Yes, I'll tell them about our rating system. Our rating system. We have a four-tiered rating system in alphanumeric. The worst of the worst, don't even want to talk about it, is that was bad. That was very, very bad. The second tier is I don't think so. Almost forgot at that time. Yeah, right? Okay. I don't think so. That means it wasn't like that bad, but it was still pretty bad. I, it's a throwaway episode. I'll never talk about it again, probably. And then there's that was easy enough, which was it wasn't horrible, wasn't the best, but I liked it because you know. And then our very yes. final top of the top, cream of the crop, is alphanumeric. And that is top of the top, cream of the crop. And the cream rises to the top. That's right. The crop of the cream. The cream of the top the top of the crop uh i guess we'll start with cal cal what did you think uh, what are you giving this one I, it's odd how good this this one i thought my mis nostalgia was misleading me i was like even though this is i vividly remember this from my childhood all i remember is like the cantina the market and the gun scene with the death blossom um barely remember turbo but man like i like how competent and confident matrix and andrea are i i love it this progresses the plot it's closing things up it's i like the shootout um um Christopher, I think you mentioned that this was the last episode in the UK. 
because they felt like it was getting too mature. Too dark, man. Too dark. And I can see why. There's a shootout. It's... Un-British. <laughs> a shootout is very un-British. Yeah, yeah, it's still pretty big comic on The Guardian. It absolutely gets a an alphanumeric rating for me. It nice. This is this is this is it, folks. This is what I like to see. I like to see sexy Andrea and sexy Enzo kicking ass and being confident and taking names and walking their dog. Not even bothering to take names. Yeah. Well, why would Screw you? Names. Fuck all these guys. Yeah. Except Turbo. Except Turbo and Mer. What was the search engine? Uh, Maxine. Maxine. Yeah. So, alphanumeric, resounding alphanumeric. Uh, I'm gonna give it the same. Uh, this will be the first episode I've given an alphanumeric in a long time. I think. Something. I feel like I haven't given. Uh, it's been 84 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, oh. the, yeah. this episode is great. I think it's uh, probably my favorite. Well, it's definitely my favorite episode of this four-episode arc. Um, I love the shootout. Uh, I, I I love the look of the whole town. Uh, I, I like that we're getting some backstory now. Like we're like some some pieces are starting to fall into place. Like we're finding out about Damon. Uh, we're introducing a greater threat other than just system viruses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alphanumeric from me. Tying Bob back in. <clears throat> Fiddler. Uh, it's, it's my turn, isn't it? It's my turn, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I, I, I too am going to give this one an alphanumeric because despite all the questions that it brings up, you know, the whole thing about uh, Glitch, the whole thing about whether or not it was Mouse or Enzo, because, you know, who didn't... The whole thing with Turbo is, you know... Uh... Oh, we lost you for a moment. Audio and video listeners, uh, things out of his control have... If, you, if you're listening and you're not hearing him a lot, this um, podcast, it's one, it is because I talk a lot, but two, um, it's mostly uh, Wi-Fi's issues going on for him. Can you hear oh, me now? He's back. Yeah, you're back. Yes. yes. Uh, where, where, where did I? Where did I go last? Where did you hear? Oh, that? you were saying. Oh, there, it brings up questions. It brings up like questions. Glitch. Um, yeah. Like glitch. Uh, uh, um, um, or bow. How, how did how did uh, Enzo know Turbo? Or perhaps mere just recognition from mention in season two. But anyways, uh, I'm going to give this one an alphanumeric too because it's actually one of my favorites. It's really cool references to do with uh, Star Wars and then uh, the whole spaghetti western theme, you know, with Clint Eastwood, uh, Man with No Name, and uh, it was just it was just a really the Aladdin. Bad it's a little bit of everything. A yeah. little bit of everything. Even like the little like. <laughs> sound that like when Enzo jumps off a roof that that kind of killed me right there I uh yeah I love this episode uh, a lot of great shootouts a lot of great excitement um I'm gonna give this a very high alphanumeric it sounds like it's unanimous folks yeah we, we did it up. we did it um this is a good example of how to do references to other iconic movies or genres without it being so heavy handed that like the you're like last week you're episode. insulting the uh <laughs> like um no um not last week's uh freaking uh where no sprite has gone before. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was just shoving it down our throats. And it's like, you want Star Trek? You want it? Do you want more? Take it. Yeah. You like Star Trek, don't you? And I'm like, no, please. I can't eat any more Star Trunk. <laughs> no more, please. No more. Please, I'm so full. I don't want any more cursor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he it was... doesn't even look like Bob. <laughs> Yeah. Why would you point a gun at your best friend? <laughs> Anyways. So, a very big contrast. <laughs> Limey. Okay. 
Um, uh, YouTube comment I wanted to uh, uh, point out. Uh, Chris oh. G. Uh, he. Yeah. This is in regards Ooh. to last week's episode. He says, I miss AP Sniddler. Can we get a Sniddler cut for this episode? Ah, really? Ooh. Uh, there's... I, I think the answer is probably yes. He's thinking about it, folks. <laughs> thinking. Uh, and... He's back. I'm back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. I will do a Sniddler cut for that episode. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, yeah, probably a live riff or something, something fun. We actually talked oh, about, uh, uh, yeah. me and Cal talked about, because uh, there have been a few episodes you've missed now. I think you've missed four in total. Uh, maybe at some point going back and like just redoing those episodes. Me? Yeah, all of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so maybe that's something to... Uh, well, uh, a project when we run out of reboot to yeah. talk about. We There might be projects that the three of us could do before we, <laughs> we uh, resort to um, going back to remakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, but a Sniddler cut though. Well, like it's an, an audio. I, it's live an idea. React. It's an idea that I'm fond of. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's been the eighth episode of season three of Reboot, the episode with no name. Uh, we will be back in two weeks from now. With the ninth episode, we are taking next week off because we are going to be recording the second episode of our Shadow Raiders podcast, War Planets. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you want we're to support... be doing, oh sorry, I was going to say we're going to be um, doing War Planets episodes five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, yeah, War Planets Volume Two. Uh, yes. Best way to support this show, that show, and any other show that we do is wherever you're listening to this, give give it a subscribe, give it a like, give it a five-star rating, do the thing. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash lasercomb, where you can hear us uh, talk about off-topic bullshit for a mere $4 American per month. That's all you got to pay. $4 American. Yeah. $4 American. Yeah, just $4. That's like five whole dollars Canadian. You, uh, it also gets you access to our, our Discord, where we record all this. So if you want to interact with us more directly... There are those dank memes. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the place to do it. Um, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Twitter, at Lasercomb, L-A-Z-O-R-C-O-M-B, or on Instagram, at Christopher Siege. Uh, Snidler, you are on Twitter as well, yes? He's thinking about it. While he's thinking about it, uh, I like that he freezes in contemplative poses sometimes. Um, I'm on Twitter too. Uh, Neo underscore Cal. Uh, Cal with a K. Um, I'm back. And, uh, oh. Who are you on Twitter? Gonna, who are Snidler. you on Twitter, good sir? I'm, a, I'm AP Snidler on Twitter. S N I W D L E R. Um, yes, I'm also AP Snidler on Instagram and AP Snidler. On YouTube, yes, that's right. What's I have your MySpace? YouTube. My MySpace is I forget because this isn't 2006. So, <laughs> uh, Facebook.com/slash Lasercomb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to hear more of me and Cal, uh, check out Too Much Energy on our Beast Wars podcast, where we do this but talk about Beast Wars. Uh, I. You... I also have some other shows that I want to plug. Uh, I have a show called Based On, where me and my partner uh, talk about film reviews and of books and compare and contrast them with the book that they're based on. The show is called Based On. Oh, so every episode is talking about a novel to film adaptation or yep. comparing the two? Yep. 
Uh, we only have one episode so far. It's dedicated to Fight Club, but we have another episode coming out soon that is going to be about the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, that one, that one's going to be cool. Uh, I also have a new show that is launching uh, Saturday, the twenty second of May. It is called Cartoons at Night. Uh, it's going to be a bi weekly show where me and a rotating assortment of guest hosts uh, talk about animated TV shows and movies you won't find on Saturday mornings. First episode. Yeah. First episode is going to be about the uh, Clerks cartoon. So Sweet. Keep, keep an eye out for that. That's cool. Uh, if, there, if there's nothing else, uh, I think we should I get out of here. Everything. Uh, if yeah. you want to see me you want to see me dancing like an idiot uh then yes follow me on twitter or lasercom or join our patreon yeah or else or else <laughs> or else what exactly <laughs> i'll think of something <laughs> or i'll think of something. I'll, yeah or I'll, ha I'll haunt your dreams dressed like a sexy construction worker or is that um, will you haunt their dreams dressed as a sexy construction worker if they join our Patreon. <laughs> Nobody knows, folks. But there's only one way to find out, so go go do that. Reboot! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. And I have been another host, NeoCal. And I'm another host, AP Sniddler. Until... Did I cut out there? Oh, you're here. I'm here. Good. I'm A.P. Sniddler. Everybody stay frosty. Uh, until next time. Beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, maximize. Uh, <clears throat> God, Battle I mode? God, I should have thought of this before we got here. Uh, why are we walking like this? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>